All right. Thank you all for coming. Um, I know that I see a number of, uh, of faces that I've seen in this talk before. I have uh, updated this talk to, uh, to the 2.4 version of the web server, but you will see some, some familiar content if you've attended this talk at another event. Um, so mod rewrite is uh, something that I've spent the last six or eight years working on uh, documentation for. And when I first started working with the Apache web server, this was at the top of the mod rewrite documentation. Um, you know, not a, very, not a very welcoming introduction to a topic to tell you you're pretty much not smart enough to learn this. And uh, it also said at the top of the documentation that uh, a, a quote from another person who is, is one of the most brilliant people I know, Brian Bellendorf, the quote was something along the lines of, uh, mod rewrite is as powerful as send mail and about as easy to configure as send mail. So with that introduction, you know, you, you go through the documentation. It was pretty awful. But uh, I, I started working on the mod rewrite documentation with a goal of removing some of the magic from mod rewrite. Because if you look anywhere else on the web for information about mod rewrite other than the official documentation, you'll find a lot of recipes that are um, uh, illegible and wrong and uh, provide really bad advice. Uh, so, you know, it was my goal to, to expose that, that it's, really, it's really an algebra. It is not a magical incantation, it's an algebra. And so understanding the algebraic notation behind it really simplifies it. Um, there is only one book on the market about mod rewrite. So if, if you want to uh, learn more about mod rewrite, I, I would encourage you to look up this, this wonderful book. And, uh, but, but there's another book that I would recommend that you look at, and that is uh, Jeffrey Friedel's book, Mastering Regular Expressions. And uh, this is, it, it's, it's really a great book. He, he's really great at uh, helping you understand how the regular expression engine works and how it analyzes a pattern. And when you understand that, then the way that you write your own regular expression starts to make a lot more sense. And you can also read other people's regular expressions much more coherently. So regular expressions themselves are a way to describe patterns in text. And you, you, start with, you start with a small vocabulary and you work up. And that, that's my approach in this talk, is to give you a small vocabulary. And then, you know, we'll ignore some of the more complicated stuff because you're not going to use it until you get more advanced. And we'll introduce that as the talk goes on. Um, the, the regular expression library that is used by Apache Mod Rewrite as well as practically everything else you'll ever encounter that uses regular expressions is called PCRE, which stands for Perl Compatible Regular Expressions. And Perl itself uses, uses this regular expression language. Um, and it, it builds on earlier definitions of regular expressions. And it, it adds a lot of the quirkiness of the Perl language itself. So uh, it, it, can, it can match pretty much any pattern of text you might ever encounter. Uh, there are some things that you won't do within the, uh, within the Apache Mod Rewrite context because you're matching typically URLs rather than arbitrary binary data, for example. And so we've got kind of a, a slimmed down vocabulary that I'll be introducing to you. Um, the, the first few times I gave this talk, I, I, I was worried that I was starting a little bit uh, below everyone's level, and, I, and I, if, if that's where I am, I apologize. But what I've found in my years working with Mod Rewrite is that people don't find Mod Rewrite difficult. What they find difficult is regular expressions. So let's, let's jump in here. This is the first piece of vocabulary that I want to introduce to you, and it is the, the dot. And that matches any character. And you will see this occurring in Mod Rewrite expressions all over the place. It just means match anything. Um, if you want to match a literal dot character, you, you escape it with a backslash in front of it. 
And that is standard syntax across mod rewrite. You escape things if you want them to be literal rather than using their, specials, their special meaning. Now, a little bit of a tangent here, um, and that is that characters and bytes mean different things when you're actually dealing with, with most data. And so this thing here is not a byte. It's a double byte character. And so if you happen to work in an environment, and I gave this talk in, in uh, Hong Kong several weeks ago where people knew more about this than I do, but uh, if you're actually matching URLs that contain double byte characters, things get a little bit weird. And mod rewrite is, is not possibly the best way to deal with that. But anyway, all of that to say that when I refer to characters and bytes in this talk, I'm talking about the same thing. I'm talking about characters because we're dealing mostly with, mod, with uh, URLs. Now, there's this tool called regexpal. This is actually a website um, where you can put in any regular expression and it uses the JavaScript regular expression library, which is PCRE, to evaluate those regular expressions. So I'm talking about the dot character and A dot B matches AXB and ACB because it's A something B. But it's critical to keep in your mind every single time you write a regular expression that regular expressions are substring matches, not full string matches. And so A dot B matches pre-Cambrian because it contains A something B in the middle of it. Okay? And, and if you forget that, then you may find your regular expression matching things that you didn't intend. And you'll see some examples of that later on in the talk. Now the next, the next pieces of vocabulary I want to show you are what I call repetition characters. And there's three of them, plus, asterisks, or star, and a question mark. And if you consider the dot to be an atom, these turn atoms into molecules, which you can then use to build more complicated chemicals. Okay? So A plus means one or more of the something. And so it matches a single occurrence of A. It also matches multiple occurrences of A. And also, it will match multiple times if you give it the opportunity to, which I'll show you how to do that later, but, but it's matching several times within a string. Another important thing to keep in your mind as you write, as you craft regular expressions, that you're not necessarily just matching one or even necessarily matching the first. You might end up matching the last one if you're not if you're not specific enough. The star matches zero or more and is one of the most misused characters if you, if you look at bad advice mod rewrite websites. I think that's badadvicemodrewrite.com. And uh, so it matches anything that has an A in it, but it also matches the word fish because that contains zero A's, right? So, a star, in fact, matches every string, including the empty string. The question mark character matches zero or more of something. In other words, it makes the match optional. So my example of that is uh, this regular expression containing a question mark matches both the American and European spellings of the word color because the U becomes optional. And so it matches both of these strings. All right. The next two characters I want to show you are anchors. They anchor a match to the beginning or end of a string. So the, the caret or circumflex anchors it to the beginning of a string, and the dollar sign anchors it to the end of a string. And so uh, caret A means starts with A, and it matches these two strings that start with A, it does not match these other strings which do not start with A. And A dollar sign matches a string that ends in A. Um, so that's pretty much all the vocabulary that you need to get started writing and reading mod rewrite rules. A lot of the other stuff is, uh, is bonus, and I'm going to give you a little bit of the bonus stuff. Um, a couple special cases. 
the caret dollar sign is a special case regular expression that matches an empty string and only an empty string. And so you can think of that as starts with, ends with, or perhaps ends with, starts with. It's, it's a, a zero length string. Um, a, another cool trick that you can do uh, once you start crafting more advanced regular expressions is start thinking about efficiency. So you'll often see people use the regular expression dot star to mean match anything. Now once you start understanding a little bit about how the regular expression library works, if you try and match a, I don't know, 4K long URL with dot star, you're reading that 4K into memory and you're analyzing it one character at a time to see if each character is any character. And that takes time and it's a complete waste of time. The caret all by itself matches every string because every string has a start. And so anywhere that you're using dot star, you should probably be using this instead. All right, two more things that I want to tell you about are the, the uh, grouping characters. And the first one of these is the parentheses. And this allows you to take several atoms and turn them into a molecule. Um, so for example, the molecule AB can then be treated as a single unit and AB plus matches a string containing one or more ABs. Now these parentheses also have a special side effect and that is that they capture the thing that you matched. So um, in this example, AB matches that string and when I'm done matching it, the variable dollar sign one will contain this entire value. And then I can use that in a future regular, in a future regular expression as a substitute variable. The next thing that it matches, in other words, that, yes? That's correct. Um, yeah, so it makes the it makes the capture the thing that's that's repeated, and you want to just capture the first one. Um, but the first one is always going to be A B. I don't know. Maybe maybe if you can give me an example of where that would be useful, we could figure out how to do that. But uh, I think the short answer is no. Right, so you could have AB followed by not AB and then capture that one. Right. Yeah. The first slash, yeah. Yeah. And I'll show you how to do a not in a second. So, yeah, you could, I guess you could do that. Yeah. Um, the second set of parentheses that you use is dollar sign two, and the third set is dollar sign three, and so on up to nine. You can't go past nine. Um, this was a architectural decision that was made long ago uh, because dollar one zero is ambiguous. Is it dollar one followed by a literal zero? Not sure. So when Ralph wrote this, he decided we'll stop at nine. The second set of, uh, of containing braces is the, the square braces and this is something that defines a character class. And a character class means match one or more of these things. So the character class OAU matches O or A or U, but only one of them. So it matches these three words that are C something T. It does not match coat, which contains two of those characters, because that's not, that's not what I said. Of course, I could put a plus after this if I wanted to match that. <clears throat> and then uh, the, the last piece of vocabulary I'm gonna tell you about is not. Now, in this context of mod rewrite specifically, any regular expression can be negated by putting an exclamation mark in front of it. As you use regular expressions in other languages, they have different, different notation for this. So, um, you know, like in, in Perl, you'd use a different notation to say, I don't want to match this regular expression. But in mod rewrite, it's a, it's a bang, or an exclamation mark. Um, 
a character class is negated with a caret sign as the first character of the character class. So this is an example where a particular character means different things based on context. And that can confuse some, some regular expression beginners, but this is always the first character of a character class. All right, everyone with me so far? Any questions? So, mod rewrite uses the regular expression library to match things in URLs and then do something to the request as a result. And lots of other side effects that you can have here. So the first directive that we want to talk about is rewrite rule. And rewrite rule says rewrite rule pattern target. And this means if it matches the pattern, now that italic doesn't show up very well, does there? Anyway, if, if the URL matches the pattern, then we want to do this thing instead. And this thing can be a wide variety of actions. Um, you can also append to this some flags, and flags affect what the action looks like, whether it's a redirect or a particular status code or a proxy pass or whatever. Um, this is a diagram from the documentation that, that uh, kind of highlights exactly what we're talking about. But uh, the, the important thing here is that the pattern is the regular expression and the substitution is the target of your rewrite. And that can actually be um, a, a, uh, a full file path on your file system if you want to rewrite to something that's on local disk. It can be a URL that you want to redirect to, a fully qualified URL or a partial local URL. Or if you don't want to actually do anything, then you put a dash there. And there's a lot of situations where you don't want to do anything. You want to match a URL is so that you know that you matched and you want to take a side effect action. I'll show you a bunch of examples of that in just a moment. Um, the pattern is applied to everything after HTTP colon slash slash host name. So everything starting with the first slash after the host name is what mod rewrite can consider. Uh, so the host name is not part of what what rewrite rule has a chance to look at, nor is the protocol. Uh, and this, this will vary based on context, as I'll show you a little bit later. And as I said, the target is what you want to do instead. So here's a, a simple example. Um, I have a, a regular expression here that says, starts with slash images slash, and then there's something, a dot star in parentheses, and that's followed by a literal dot JPG. In other words, anytime somebody requests a JPEG file in the images directory, I want to trigger this action. And the action is rewrite that to the pics directory, dollar one, which is what matched here, dot gif. And I'm appending an R flag, which means redirect it with a status of 301 in this case. Now, if you think back to something I said a moment ago, there's a pretty good chance that I'm misusing dot star here. Because if something is in a subdirectory of the images directory, I might want to treat it differently. So that's something that you need to think about when you're writing a regular expression like this. Think through what possible things it can match. And always err on the side of being too stingy rather than too generous. Dot star is usually too generous because it is what's called greedy. It gobbles up as much as it possibly can. Now the flags, there's lots of flags that modify the behavior of the rewrite rule directive. Um, if you don't have any flags, then it treats the target as an absolute file path. I'm sorry, uh, well, so in this example, if I didn't have the R flag, because my file path starts with a slash, it would actually treat this as the slash picks directory of my file system, 
which is almost certainly not what you mean. So the default behavior of mod rewrite is perhaps a little bit unintuitive um, and, and causes people to do some, some unfortunate things. But let me, let me talk about some of the flags here. The R flag is uh, one of the ones that you'll use most, most commonly. It issues a redirect, which means that the client, the browser, will actually notice that something changed. They'll see the URL change in their, in their browser address bar. You can optionally send um, a specific status code. So in, in the example here, I've got an R equals 302, which is a temporary redirect. And in the second one, I've got an R equals 301, which is a permanent redirect. And um, if you want to get really tricky, you can actually put any valid HTTP status code there. So you can say R equals 404 and return a not found status code to the browser or a, you know, 407 payment required or whatever it is. What's that now? Um, if you, no, it does not. If you do not send a 300 status code, it does not send a location header. It just, it just returns the error message. The PT flag is, is one that, that you should probably be using pretty often, and this is PT stands for pass-through, and it actually tells the URL mapping engine to treat the target as a, as a URI. In other words, it passes it back through the mapping function. And the advantage of doing this is that it will actually honor things like redirects, aliases, handlers, um, whereas otherwise it would simply return, say, in this example here, without the PT flag, it would return prod.php as a raw text file, which is certainly not what you want. But by, by using the PT flag, it passes it back through the mod PHP handler to process it. The B flag is something that you'll hardly ever use, but when you need it, it's invaluable. It does escaping of non-alphanumeric characters. Um, the C flag is another one that you will probably almost never use. It allows you to chain several rules together, and if any one of them fails, it skips the whole chain. So if, if you have a complex rewriting scenario that you want to break down into sub-steps, that's, this, is the, this is the way to do it. The CO flag sets a cookie. Um, you can define the name of the cookie, the value of the cookie, the domain for which the cookie is valid, and then optionally some other variables there, the lifetime of the cookie, the, uh, whether it's a secure or HTTP only cookie. Uh, DPI is a new in 2.4 flag, which allows you to discard the path info variable. And this is another thing that, it, it's hard to come up with examples of why you would want to do this, but it's something that people ask on, on IRC on a regular basis, because they have something in the URL that is affecting the outcome of their, of their backend process, and they want to discard that as part of the rewrite. Mod rewrite by default leaves that path info unmodified as with whatever other rewrites you're doing along the way. ENV allows you to set an environment variable. And here's the first example of where you're using something purely for its side effect. Um, actually, I guess the cookie one, you're kind of doing that too. But uh, anyway, let me, let me show you this here. So I've got a rewrite rule that matches any requests for an image file. And the target of the rewrite rule is a dash, which means don't rewrite it. I don't want you to, to modify the request. I just want the side effect, which is I'm going to set an environment variable. And in this particular case, I'm doing that so that I can have a log directive that looks for that environment variable. And so I've got a, I've got a log directive that says, here's my, my access log. And don't log anything that's an image, because I don't really care about that. When I'm doing statistical analysis of visits to my website, the images are kind of superfluous to that. So let's just leave them out of the log file. The uh, F flag returns a 403 forbidden response 
to a, to a request that matches. And so here again, I don't, I don't care to modify the request. It doesn't matter. I just want to fail it. I have never used this flag. Returns a 403 gone. Um, the H flag allows you to pass a request through to a specified handler. And so, uh, any PHP programmers here? Okay, I see a few uh, grudging acknowledgments. <laughs> um, this, this is a cool example here. This, uh, uh, it, it's great for development environments. You don't want to do this in production. But uh, what this allows you to do is any, any PHP, any .php file on your system, you can request and put an S on the end of it, so it's PHPS, PHP source. And it will serve you that PHP source file as syntax highlighted source code by using PHP's PHP source handler. And so it's really kind of cool for, for uh, debugging in, in, uh, in development environments when you want to have a quick look at the code and see the, the syntax highlighting and whatnot if for some reason your editor doesn't do that. Uh, the L flag is another place that is, is a very frequent source of error. So pay attention to this one if you're drifting off to, to your after lunch sleep. Um, the L flag means last, but it, it can mean last in a different way than you might expect. So it, it says, if this rule matches, don't run any of the ones that appear below this. Just go ahead and do the transformation and quit looking. <coughs> However, if you are using this in an HT access context, weird things can happen. Because the HT access context is outside of the main rewrite scope. And so there's, there's some evil tricks that happen there to invoke the rewrite engine. And when you say L, it hands control back up to the URL processing engine of the server, which may call the HT access file as part of its processing. Um, and so you, you gotta be really careful in HT access context particularly to use ways to avoid looping, because otherwise you're running the same rule again and again indefinitely until Apache says, hey, that's too many times, I'm gonna give up, which is usually, what's the default these days? A thousand? It's, 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 it's a lot. Um, there's also the end flag, which was to, uh, briefly named the really last flag when this was in development. And this is in 2.4, and it says, not only is this the last rule, but also don't invoke my HD access file again. I really mean last. Um, however, even here, things can go south because if you're issuing a redirect, then that passes control back to the client, which then makes a new request which is not tied to the previous request. So again, be careful there. That, that you avoid looping. And I'll show you an example a little bit later of how to avoid looping. The end flag says, do it again. Um, and this is not something that I've ever used in the real world. Well, I have once, but uh, it, there, there are better ways to do this. But if, if you need this, it's cool to have it. It runs the rule again and again until it no longer matches. So think, for example, if you have, if you want to replace one character with another character within a string. So imagine, for example, that you have given some URLs to your marketing department and they contain underscores and your marketing department prints the pamphlet with dashes in it instead, right? So you have this rule that replaces all dashes with underscores and it keeps matching, it keeps running until there are no more dashes. Okay, so that's, that's my cooked up scenario. NC makes a pattern case insensitive. That's fairly straightforward. NE prevents applying uh, escaping of special characters in the result of the rewrite. So the B flag escapes before the rewrite happens, and the NE flag prevents that to be prevents that from being escaped afterwards. And this, this is going to be useful if for any reason you have special characters in a URL that you want to preserve. 
a sub-request is when the web server makes a request back to itself for additional information. Um, this can happen in, uh, for example, if you're using mod include, is that a good example? I think so. Um, and, and you don't want to apply rewrites on sub-requests. Most of the time, you don't want to apply re rewrites to sub-requests. So this allows you to skip that if you know that you have sub-requests going on. The P flag allows you to make a request through a proxy. And uh, if you attended Daniel's talk earlier, you, you've seen a lot, of, a lot of really cool things you can do with mod proxy. Uh, there are times when mod proxy's syntax isn't flexible enough and you want to, um, you want to be able to use uh, regular expressions when you're matching. That's one scenario. The other scenario is that, um, well, the deal is that mod rewrite runs before most other things. So if you start using mod rewrite rules, you pretty much have to do all of your configuration in mod rewrite rules so that the things happen in the right order. So if you want to run mod rewrite stuff and proxy stuff at the same time, you probably want to use the P flag so that things happen in the correct order. So in this case, I'm proxying any request for an image through to a backend image server, for example. The, the query string is everything in a URL after a question mark. It's how you pass additional information, arguments to something. Uh, QSA says, keep my existing query string even if I modify, even if I give you a new query string. So in my example here, I am passing um, additional information in a query string to something on the back end. But if I already had a query string coming in, I want to preserve that. Um, if order matters, for example, if you're passing, if you're uh, trying to modify an existing query string argument, it's important to remember that this is query string append, which means whatever you did here comes first and the original query string gets put afterwards. And so you, you need to be aware of that at your application layer so that you can take advantage, so you can take advantage of the new argument rather than the old one. QSD is a uh, flag that came out of people's endless asking of how they can get rid of the query string in URLs and the mistaken belief that it will help their search engine optimization outcomes. Um, I suppose there's probably useful uses of this as well, but uh, if, if you want to discard a query string entirely instead of just ignoring it, it's what you do. This is kind of a cool flag. This is the go to, argue, the go to function of mod rewrite. This allows you to skip rewrite rules. If one matches, then I skip the next however many. So um, if you're using 2.4, you should be using the if directive instead. It's just a lot easier to read, it's a lot easier to troubleshoot. Um, you don't have to modify the argument to the S flag when you add another rewrite rule, it just works. But um, there are cases where this is useful and what I have here is S equals two saying skip these next two rules if my rewrite conditions passed. All right, and then finally the T flag allows you to set a particular mine type on files. And uh, this is useful, for example, if uh, I want to serve a particular file type as plain text, for example, whereas otherwise it would have been processed in some way. Maybe I want to serve an HTML file as plain text so that the browser will show the source. And uh, this forces a MIME type, which the browser should then honor and display things uh, in whatever MIME type you've provided. So I said there were lots of flags. That's, that's all the flags. Um, and these are exhaustively documented with examples in the mod rewrite docs. So uh, if you forget some of those, they're there. Now, unfortunately, HD access files are a fact of life. And uh, many of the people that, that we support on the IRC channel are using rewrite rules in HD access files due to whatever limitations they have in their environment. And HD access files change the rules in many respects. Now I said right at the beginning that mod rewrite considers everything 
from the first slash in your URL onward. This is not true in HD access files. And this is a source of many, of much confusion and errors in HD access files. So consider these three examples. This is a rewrite rule in my main server configuration. And I'm looking for files that are contained in the images directory. And so I start with uh, caret slash images. However, if I have an HD access file in the root of my server, in my document directory, that initial slash disappears. And what is presented to mod rewrite is everything after the directory path, which is in this case just a slash. And if I have an HD access file in the images directory, the entire slash images slash disappears from what mod rewrite gets to consider. The rewrite base directive is, uh, it, it allows you to ensure that the target of your rewrite has the correct file base on it. So if, if you watch the rewrite log, and I'll show you a little bit about logging in a moment. If you watch the rewrite log processing this block, the first thing that it'll do is it'll say, removing slash images slash from, from uh, the pattern that we're gonna match. And then when it's done, you'll see it adding it back on using the rewrite base. And setting the rewrite base explicitly is not always required, but it's good practice because it keeps your own sanity. Um, there are many situations in which the thing that's stuck back on the URL once you're done isn't what you expect. And these are things where, for example, you're in an aliased directory or a symlinked directory. And if you're not the sysadmin, you may not actually know that. And so I do recommend that you use rewrite base religiously because it just, it just helps you think through what's actually happening. The next directive I want to talk about is the rewrite condition. Rewrite rule can only consider your request URI. Rewrite condition can consider everything else. And so the rewrite, the rewrite condition syntax looks like this. It looks very much like the rewrite rule syntax. Uh, I've got a test string and I've got a condition and I've got flags. Uh, the test string is the variable which I wish to consider. And this can be a literal string or it can be any server variable, any variable that the HTTP process has access to. Request variables, environment variables, I stick that in there. And then the condition is a, a something. And it can be a regular expression, it can be a literal string, or it can be a uh, file path test, like does this file path exist, for example. Um, so here's a couple examples. Um, I want to rewrite based on client address. If somebody's coming from my local network, I want to give them a different page. So I say, if the remote address, the, the client address, matches 10.2, then I'm going to rewrite it to the intranet uh, page. Now, there's something weird going on here, which uh, is a lot more evident here, and that is the flow of back references. So consider this example here. I've got a, I think I just confused myself. My example doesn't show, oh no, that's on my next slide. So hold on to that thought for just a moment. Um, the purpose of this is to show that I can match an HTTP host or whatever in my rewrite condition and hold on to that in a back reference. So I mentioned earlier that rewrite rule keeps back references $1, $2, three. Rewrite condition keeps back references percent one, percent two, percent three. And so in my rewrite rule, I'm rewriting any request to that same thing but in a subdirectory defined by the HTTP host. So this is a poor man's virtual hosting here. I look at the host, the host name, the requested host name, and I insert that into the file path.
Um, but, but here's a slightly more elaborate example where some weird things go on. I have a rewrite condition, and the rewrite condition contains a back reference which appears to have not been defined yet. So when you look at rewrite condition and rewrite rule, it's important to know how the web server itself looks at them, because it's not looking at them the same way that you are. When it encounters a block of rewrite directives, it uh, skips the rewrite conditions and goes straight to the rewrite rule. If the rewrite rule matches, then it says, it's worth my time looking at the conditions, rather than the other way around. And the weird side effect here is that this back reference is actually defined when I look at the rewrite condition. Did that make sense? Okay, I see a lot of, I don't see anybody shaking their heads. So, you know, look at this slide later and mull through it, but, but always remember that the rewrite conditions are never even considered unless the rewrite rule matches. Now, another side effect of that is that you want to remember that when you're writing rules for the sake of efficiency. Because it doesn't matter if you have a million rewrite conditions here. If the rewrite rule doesn't match, they'll, they'll always be ignored. So you, you want to eliminate, you want to run things in the, in the order that fails fastest. So you want to put your condition here that will eliminate the need to run the rewrite conditions. Does that make sense? All right, in the, in the rewrite condition, there's a couple things that you can do. You'll see this, you'll see this example lots. Any, uh, anybody here run WordPress on, on your website? Yeah, I see a few. So this is the, this is the standard HT access file from WordPress. And it says the following. Well, actually it's not, but it's, it's similar to the default HT access file. It says, if this file does not exist, and if this directory does not exist, then send the request, any request, this is just the, remember this matches anything, send that request to index.php. This should say rewrite con, yeah, um, that's, that's right. Um, That's what it is, that's what it does say. I don't know what you were saying. All right, so uh, this is what's called the front controller model, where you have a single thing that handles all requests no matter what they are. But the no matter what they are is the sticking point, because if somebody requests an image file, you want that to be served as an image file, not processed by your front controller. And that's what these two lines do. They say, is that a file on disk or is it in fact a directory on disk that we want to map to whatever, a redirect or a directory listing? And then your handler, your index.php or whatever it is, can look at the originally requested URI and do the right thing based on that. And that's what WordPress does and that's what Joomla does and Drupal and whatever. Um, there's a number of other file test operators, by the way. The dash s, is, is this a non-zero file, a non-zero size file? Dash u is a, a cool one that says, is this a valid URL? In other words, it goes through and it evaluates um, redirects and aliases and handlers and whatever and says, is this, is this gonna return a 404 or is this valid? Um, and because that involves a sub-request, it can be very slow. So, oh, huh, I'm running out of time. Um, there's also the LA-U, which looks ahead, look ahead, and this allows you to investigate variables that aren't in fact set yet. And the most common example of this is remote user. Authentication happens after mod rewrite. 
And if you think about the flow, that makes sense because we want to authenticate the target, not the original URL. But if we look ahead, we can, we can figure out what the username is and then do a rewrite based on that. This is also kind of slow. Now, um, I, I, am, I am running out of time, so I wanna, I wanna cover two, real, two things really fast. One is that I can now use expressions in, um, in the uh, rewrite condition, and those of you that attended my talk earlier today, which is most of you have already seen this. The other is that there is a directive called rewrite map, and rewrite map allows you to do things that are too complicated, too cumbersome to do in a simple one-line rewrite rule. And so you can call out to something else. And that something else can be a simple text file that uh, has one-to-one -one mapping, or it can be a, a script, it can be a database query, it can be a variety of different things. Um, so here's an example of using rewrite map against a plain text file. And the plain text file is a one-to-one -one mapping which matches a, a string that you want to appear in your URL to a product ID. Um, and there are a number of other map types, as I mentioned. So, that being said, um, the only other major topic in here is logging. And, and since I am out of time, um, I... I'm going to skip to the end here and show you where my slides are for those of you that missed it and uh, give a few moments for questions. Uh, you know what? I almost was out of, out of content. Um, these are the bonus slides. Um, so I, logging, uh, there is a rewrite log directive in 2.2 and earlier. In 2.4 and later, that is uh, subsumed into the log level directive. And log level now allows you to set a logging level per module. So I have a warn, which looks like warm in this font, but that is warn. And then I say on rewrite, I want to set a trace six level. Um, and I don't have an elaborate example of logging. I just have that. So I, I'd be glad to show you more afterwards. Um, all of these slides are on my website and they are also on GitHub uh, if, if you want to submit patches to them or see how this develops over the next few events. Um, and if anybody has any questions, please speak up. I will warn you that my hearing aid battery just died, so speak loudly. Yes. Um, I will admit sadly I have not read the book. <laughs> Few people have. Mm -hmm. Yes. By putting multiple slash. slashes in a row. Yeah. And I've never seen anyone talk about that, and I was curious if you come across that or Well, I would I would suggest a different solution to that. And that is to use mod security. And mod security is, if you're not familiar with it, anyone that's not familiar with it should become familiar with it and, and use it. And one of the many things that mod security does, just out of the box without any configuration, is exactly that. It collapses multiple slashes. And um, it, it, uh, it does a number of other things like disallow dot dot in URLs. Just as a just as a standard part of turning it on, even before you use any re, any security rules, so that's what I'd recommend there. But and it's very possible that uh, I did have a mod security rule that was doing that, and I wasn't aware of it. But my impression is that it does it by default. Yeah. Okay. Any any other questions? I have two seconds left. Okay, time's up. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>